Good morning, everyone. I'm Coach William Minge. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to, to have an opportunity to be here at the University of Tennessee. Uh, it's exciting times, I think, as we all know, and, and I'm really excited to be a part of this thing that we have going on right now. And it is awesome to be, able to be around the players. And you talk about being able to drink from a fire hose this last week. It has been awesome, and I've loved every moment of it. Well, this time, we'd like to open it up. We'll start on the left with no Hey Coach Noah Taylor with Rivals.com. Noah, Noah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> he said, what, what's the last few months been like for you, for you personally? I know you just mentioned it there, you know, coming in and getting hit in the ground running, but going from a college football playoff to, to a transition here, what's, what's that been like? Uh, it, it has been like life in hyperspeed, you know, to where you, you have a chance to compete for the national championship, and then you're getting ready to, in a sense, rebuild and get everything squared away there, and then there's change, and then there's more change, and then literally in the last hour, there's, then there's Tennessee. So it was literally, and then all of a sudden, a week ago, I'm here. So it, it, it has been a, a whirlwind, but, but that's kind of the nature of the beast that we're in right now. And we're excited, and we always take advantage of every moment that we have. Brent? Yeah, Coach Brent Holmes with, with Ball Quest. I, I'm curious, your tie to Coach Bain. What did you know about him? What did you know about Tennessee? Kind of how did this marriage come together? Uh, Coach Banks and I kind of go back to when he was at Penn State, I was in Indiana, and we have known each other over the years and just kind of have seen each other passing on the road recruiting. And we've also kind of obviously played against each other, but having a chance, haven't had a chance of being in the same conference. We've never worked together. It's just kind of one of those scenarios where a conversation happened and started, hey, would you be interested? And this is kind of the scenario. And, and literally, and all this happened in probably 48 hours. It, 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 it was a, a two-day span. <laughs> So why were you interested in this one? What, what was the thing? Uh, because n number one, I know the history and the tradition and the branding that this place be, uh, has with that, with that power tee and what it all represents. The recruiting uh, that you can be able to do here, but also uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Coach Heifel as well. Seeing the things that he's done when you look at his background and his record. And then when we got to talking, I think I knew that I could have a big impact here uh, in the group with respect to my position, uh, helping our defensive staff, helping our overall staff, helping our football team. And that was something that, that was important to me. Patrick and Ben. Patrick Brown, 24-7 sports coach. Uh, you, you obviously worked with Coach Moore for, for a few years now. How, how, it sounded like you were going to be with him in Alabama. Kind of how, what did it take to sort of <laughs> branch off from him and, and, and come here when you had a chance to maybe come into the SEC at a different place? Yeah, well, as you can assume, it, it was very tough because you have a, a very good comfort level with the staff, with people, with how you do things. Uh, but then when you have another branded program that's exactly the same, that, that probably may be just as established as, as the program that you're dealing with that comes into play, that's something you want to look at and something you want to seek. And, and having a chance to be able to do something different, be around some of the young men here and help literally get to the hearts and minds of these players and help them compete for an SEC and national championship, that's something that became very important to me. Coach Vivi G, 24 7 Sports. I'm, I'm curious your early thoughts on the room that you're inheriting. Uh, a lot of talent, but a lot of young talent. I guess does that excite you as a coach to know that you've got a lot of young guys to, to work with and develop? Yeah, uh, yes, it does. But, but also, no, no pun intended, that's why we have to work 24 <laughs> 7. Uh, because when, when you have youth, that's something that you can be able to use to develop. Being able to get with them, trying different platforms and learning. Because in the end of the day, it's, it's, it's our responsibility as coaches to make sure that they can be able to go execute. So when you have someone that is what we call green and growing, that means they are young, they are assertive, and they're ready to emerge. Now, we have to be able to do things systematically to be able to allow them to be able to go play and be able to make their plays and point of attack. And when you have some excitement like that in the room, that's something that really excited me to, to really want to be here, knowing you just didn't have guys that you're only going to be with, let's say, for six months and then you're kind of starting from scratch. We have a really good room of guys that are really ready to take the next step. And that's something that just excites me as a coach, continuously uh, putting them in scenarios where they can be developed and getting them to be able to do things that they couldn't ordinarily or, or do themselves. Austin. Austin Bryce with Long Curve Ball Quest. Uh, coach, when, when you look at the opposite side of the room, you've got Keenan Peely, who, you know, is going to be 26. What, what experience does, does he help you with? And, what kind of have been your you know, early impressions of him? 
Yeah, a Keenan, but we call him Uncle Grandpa because he, he is the old war bug veteran. Uh, it, it's, it's so funny, we were talking in some meetings today just about what you did over the weekend. Well, you know, some guys, hey, I, I went and took so-and-so out to eat or went over here. Well, he, he, he's doing some home improvements with his wife. So, 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 so and I just said, just whatever you do, just always say yes, and you'll, you'll never have a problem, guaranteed. But I've had a chance to really get to know him kind of even a, a year ago when he was coming out of BYU because we recruited him at, at Washington. Uh, but to see him, he brings another level of maturity. But for me, the, 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 that really puts me in a scenario where I can really command leadership from him and really trying to instill things in him that's going to allow him to really grab the bull by the horns when it comes to him being the one vocal and action leader on our football team that's going to allow us to be able to take the next step. To the back with John and Sam. Hi, Coach. John Satori in the back here. The John. How are you doing? Coach David. Um, it's been a, a long process for you to coach in a type of game like you got the opportunity to in Washington last year. How much excitement does, does that give you, having experience after all years in coaching, to what did you learn from, from that season and that experience that you hope to bring to your team? Probably the biggest thing is that when you pour into your young men, that that is a byproduct of what occurs. And when you have a team that is player-led, that is a byproduct. Of that and when guys believe in one another and they do not beat themselves that is a byproduct of that and, and, and kind of one of our main maxims that we have in this program when you look around the building you know the team that makes the least amount of mistakes will be the team that's going to be in the best position to win the football game like that is so true that it's said by coach Nealon years ago to where that is a staple in all of college football or probably all of sport around the world and if you can make sure that you can remain that particular team, you will be in every game. Coach, back here, Sam Rothman, WATTV. You talked a little bit about the tradition here in Tennessee, but I'm wondering, you know, you've been at all different stops, but this is your first in the SEC. What does that bring? What is that excitement to reach this level of college football? Yeah, it's, it's you know, where in, in a sense, you're, you're kind of at the pinnacle because everything that you look at everything you read about, everything you see, most of the time the SEC has the gold standard. And when you look at the gold standard, there's gonna be a few teams historically that have been up there. Well, the one with the power T has been one of those schools. So for us to have the opportunity to be here, it, well, it is an honor and a privilege. And we really look forward to being able to really add to some of the next steps when it comes to continuously creating some of the histories and tradition that will go on uh, forward from here. Ryan on coaches left and Wes. Ryan Silvio, Rumbles.com. Just looking at the young guys in the room, has anyone stood out so far in your eyes? Well, some of the guys, it's, it's one of those scenarios where we're just trying to see exactly what they can do. Uh, so for, for us, I've only had really one workout with them. Everything else has been in the meeting room or walkthroughs. So that's why when we come back next Monday uh, after spring break, getting in the spring ball, I told everyone, we're gonna all start with a clean slate. I want to be able to teach you and show you just kind of one-on-one -on -one and allow you all to grow together and allow you to grow as your own person and you to grow as your own person and kind of go from there with each each individual. So nothing has kind of happened as yet, per se. Uh, Wes Welker with 24-7 Sports. Did you, you say Wes Welker? Well, I wish. <laughs> what are we doing this? Uh, when, you know, when you look at the time of possession stuff at Tennessee with the offense there's been some hesitancy from some coaches in the past to kind of want to go to a place where maybe you're going to be on the field quite a bit why was that not an issue for you because i truly believe that in a lot of places it's more a matter of how you see it uh, sometimes the time of possession may be maybe a challenge but if you build your room right you build your defense structured correctly that just means more guys get to play so you have to have more depth in your room more depth at each individual position and more people to play. So if we do that, and, 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 and again, and you all know this, on defense, no matter where you are, you have to have the philosophy of you're a fireman coming onto the football field and there's a five alarm blaze. So no matter when you get on the football field or no matter how you get on the football field, it's our responsibility, number one, to be able to put the fire on, put the fire out and get on the field. Adam, then Ryan. Adam Sparks, not from East Central. Uh, Coach, we've already asked you about like different options you've had. Uh, you could go in a number of different schools during this offseason. 
how do you do that process? Like, do you do you sit down with a legal pad and do pros and cons? Are you talking to your family? Like, what is that? What is that like when you're comparing different programs and trying to figure out where you fit that? Yeah, it, it's it's a little bit of everything because number one, you want to be able to look at the stability of the program and, and, and see who has gone and come uh, from the program. You want to look at the history and tradition of the program. Uh, you you also want to look at how will that program be able to help you grow professionally? And probably for me, that was one of the more important things, being able to look at how you can consistently continue to grow. Uh, can you be able to grow? And what can evolve from this particular scenario or this situation? And, and then when you look at the place, or, uh, where is it at? Is it a place where you can be able to live and function just as a family? So, so us having a chance to be able to get on the other side of the mountains and having a chance to come to Maxwell, uh, just as a family, we're, we're, we're extremely excited. Ryan Gallagher, I'm just for some sports. Uh, as the game's gotten more complicated and the linebackers have had to play in space more, you know, obviously there's a lot of pass in that position. What are the things that you prioritize most in recruiting that position? Speed. Speed, 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 fast, quick, speed, athletic. Uh, and and, and that, that's where the game is evolving to, to where what you, what you need today uh, from a linebacker standpoint is you need length and you need athleticism. If you have those two things, you can start with that as a core. Then you have to be able to have the physicality to be able to deal with some of the teams that run the football. And you have to build your room as such to where you're playing different football teams. So your room has to be built to be able to manage being able to play all those different styles of teams that you're going to play. And, and I think that's probably something that's great uh, within the SEC because you're going to have some teams where it is the ball is chucked out in space 24-7. You're going to have some teams where the ball is coming down your throat 24-7, you're going to have some teams where it's going to be kind of your 50-50 mix. And, and that's kind of how you build your team, how you build your room. And that's for us, that is one of the biggest things that we have to just consistently, continuously do, continue to upgrade our talent to make sure you can get some guys who have what we call in-space comfort. Guys who, when you're in space, they're very, very, very comfortable. They can, they can guard and challenge good receivers and have their mindset to where they're good. They're going to be fundamentally sound. Any other questions for Coach? Great. Thank you.